well, I don't got myself hooked on this thing now, man. I got snagged on it. So I figured while I was on the subject of math tricks, maybe I'd show you another one, <clears throat> one that I actually figured out for myself. In the eighth grade, I figured out how to find the square roots of numbers. I would basically give a calculator to the other kid and say, okay, pick a number between 1 and 100, multiply that number by itself, tell me what the answer is, and I'll tell you the number that you originally picked, the square root. So they might tell me an answer like um, 1849. And in that case, I can tell you right off the answer to that is 43. But here's how you figure that out. You have to look at the multiples of 10. And it's fairly easy to do that in your head, the multiples of 10, such as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Since you know the square root of, the square of 4 is 16, you know, then you know that the square root of 40 is 1,600. And pretty much the same with 50, you know that 50 squared is 2,500. So what you have to do is figure out which of these two zones, or which of these zones, your answer falls in between. In this case, it's between 1,600 and 2,500. So your square root is going to be between 40 and 50. So you know it's 40-something. So how do you figure out the rest of it? Well, you have to look at this last digit here, this number 9. And that will <coughs> lead you to, that will narrow it down to two options. In this case, either 43 or 47. The reason for that is because, of course, 43 times 43 is going to end in 9. And you know that because when you go back to do the 10s, you put a 0 here. So when you add them together to your final product, you still have 9, because 3 times 3 is 9. It's pretty much the same with 47. 7 times 7 is 49. You carry the 4, but that's irrelevant because that's all up here. Still, when you go to do the 10s, you put a 0 at the end, so it comes out as 9 is the last digit. Since 9 is the last digit up here, you know that this has to be either 43 or 47. Eventually, you learn to remember which of these two options come up based on whatever last number there is. One thing you'll always notice is that right here in the middle is 45. These two numbers will always be equally distant from that. So if one of your options is 43, which is 2 less than 5, the other option would be 47, which is 2 more than 5. If your first option was 42, your other option would be 48. And once again, 2 times 2 is 4, 8 times 8 is 64. Or if your first option was 41, your other one would be 49, equal distant from 5. And once again, 1 times 1 is 1, 9 times 9 is 81. It would be a number that ends in 1. It would tell you that your square root ended in 1 or 9. Or if your square ended in, like I said, 4, <coughs> you would know that your options were 42 or 48, because 2 times 2 is 4, 8 times 8 is 64. And the zeros will always keep that 4 intact as your last digit. Well, in this case, it's 9, so you know it's either 3 or 7. So all you have to do now is take a look at this number and say, okay, is it closer to 1,600 or is it closer to 2,500? Obviously, it's closer to 1,600, which makes 43 the correct answer. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the only time you run into a problem is with numbers that end in 6, such as, like, um, 1,296. You would say, well, use the trick. 30 squared is 900. You know that. 40 squared is 1,600. And since the number is in between those two, you know the square root is between 30 and 40. But all the 6 is going to tell you is that it's either 34, because 4 times 4 is 16, or 36, because 6 times 6 is 36. Once again, equidistant from 35. They're both the same distance from 35. The problem is with these numbers that end in 6, that your two options are so close together, you might not know which one it is. And plus, this number is so close to the middle between those two, you just have no idea. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get really crazy, you could use the trick from my previous video to do 35 squared in your head, which is 3 times 1 more than itself, 12, and then add 2, 5. And then you see this number is greater than 12, 25, which means that the greater number is the actual square root. Now, I don't know if anybody can actually do that, but, you know, it's a lot to think about in a short period of time. And maybe when I was in 8th grade, I could do that, but these days, it's different. 31 years old and all, pretty much you know that if your square number that they, if the number that they give you ends in zero, you know that the square root is going to end in zero, because zero times zero is zero, and all you're going to have is zero there. It's the same with five. If your square ends in five, your square root's going to end in five. So that's easy. The only other four numbers that you will ever see at the end of a square 
at the end of the number that they give you after they multiply something by itself is 1, 4, 9, and 6. And as I said before, if it ends in 1, you know your square root ends in 1 or 9. If it ends in 4, the square root will end in 2 or 8. If it ends in 9, 3 or 7. If it ends in 6, the square root will end in 4 or 6. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just a matter of, uh, and notice how all of these, all of these two, all of these pairs are equally distant from the five in the middle. And that's how you remember. Once you figure out what one of them is, you instantly should know what the other one is because it's the opposite end of the mirror created by the five in the middle. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's all there is to it. So if this is like something that is a basic trick nowadays, then I'm sorry because I figured this out like 20 years ago. So. I don't know. But once again, old age has its costs, right? Anyway, see you guys later.